Welcome back to the Black Hills and Eastern Railroad, everybody. Today we're moving grain and we're moving it according to my childhood memories of how it was moved here in Southeast South Dakota. Usually there was a uh, trio of a quartet of lower horsepower Jeeps on the front end. And in my modeling world, there was always Atherin Blue Box type grain cars. We're going to take a look at those here next on the Black Hills and Eastern Railroad. Stick with us. First we'll get work on getting the power hooked up here. Boom. While these, while these Jeeps are tugging at this uh, grain train up the helix to nowhere here, I thought I'd make a quick point in that uh, motor railroading and, and a lot of press and a lot of social media and stuff is made out to be an expensive hobby. And, and it is, it can be. But I want to present to you the idea that not it doesn't necessarily have to be. And this uh, grain train here is a case in point. Uh, this grain train is made up of mostly, as I mentioned at the top of the show here, uh, blue box era type equipment. So uh, there's uh, AccuRail Atlas, uh, of course lots of Atherin, uh, NBC Roundhouse in this, in this train. And none of these cars are terribly expensive. But I wanted to take uh, some time in this show and uh, pull out a few and, and note to you why uh, they're special to me. And uh, you know, together I think they make up a decent looking train. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll watch this come up the Helix a little bit more. And uh, as it does, I uh, will pull a couple of cars out here and there and take a look at them. So here we have the first car that I'm going to pull out for this particular episode. And the reason I'm pulling this car out is because it came on coupling. And the reason why is because our coupler height is too low. We've got standard number five couplers on this car and these need a underset shank uh, coupler like I've got here. They think these are either number 27s or 37s. I think 27s. These are the standard head couplers. But you notice that the uh, they're underset shank to get the uh, pulling face up to where it needs to be to NMRA standard. Um, these are standard 36 inch wheels. These are I think Proto 2000 wheels. I've been putting a lot of those on uh, probably 15 years ago or so when I was at the club. And I'm no longer using those, but and there's nothing wrong with them, but on, I've painted them and, uh, and weathered the car just a little bit. But what I'm going to do is replace these couplers with uh, the 27s that I've got out. And all I'm going to do is just pull the wheel off. So I pulled the wheel off on that end, and then I'm going to just uh, pop that coupler box off. The standard uh, KD centering spring is here. Um, I had whisker couplers, but I just wanted to reuse that centering spring. So, and then we replace the, uh, the cover firmly in place, snap down, and then we put the wheel back on and make sure it rolls freely. And we do the other end just as we did the first end. So here we have a group of four Atherin PS cars. Um, these all have the 36 inch wheels that I mentioned on them and um, they have the underset shank couplers as well. Uh, these are all unique because of uh, various reasons. Uh, the first would be this is a uh, factory painted uh, car here and this is one of those cars that uh, Atherin in their genius painted with a with black bottoms and I painted these I, I, I sprayed this I think this is probably model flex BN green here it's a little light for my taste and you can't really see it on the phone here as I'm shooting but um, it's definitely a lighter shade of green than the rest of the car here um, but you didn't notice that on in the train and uh, unless I pointed it out here you wouldn't have ever seen that uh, the second car here is one that uh, <laughs> I've had this car for a very long time a buddy of mine and I painted this uh, hand painted this in uh, when I was in junior high high school early high school uh, this was originally a Santa Fe car that we brush painted I believe with Floquil I'm not sure. Anyway, so this is in the simplified scheme, uh, simplified obviously, and uh, hand decaled obviously, and uh, uh, the job isn't great. The the weathering I put over it isn't uh, spectacular either, but uh, it's fine enough for uh, to fill out a grain train. Again, I have a pair of these. Then a 1991 car is my uh, friend, operations manager Tim refers to this scheme. Uh, so the smaller Burlington Northern logo here on the uh, on the left hand side of the car as you're looking at it from the side and then these uh, horizontal stripes white stripes with the reporting marks in between and then your of course your data and then the little BN reflectors on the side sill of the car 
that's the factory paint. And then th I'm not sure what the deal is with this car. Th I believe this is uh, somebody's custom paint job. I don't do not remember where I got this. Uh, SLSF, uh, the Frisco, uh, was acquired by the Burlington Northern in 1980-81 uh, in that time frame. And probably what this is is a car that was delivered either to the Frisco right before the merger, or right after the merger, when it was determined what uh, color uh, that uh, Burlington Northern cars were going to be. So, and I believe this is a Frisco number that does not look familiar to me as a Burlington Northern uh, grain car number. So now we see after that coupler height adjustment that that uh, the coupler height matches the KD gauges on both ends. I don't know how uh, this slipped through. This uh, car slipped through with number fives on it for so long. Um, I have no excuse, and um, it's it's right now. This is an example of a uh, factory painted uh, car that uh that i put a little weathering on myself this is airbrush weathering and a little bit of actually probably probably dry brush you see that streak across the big nothing logo there uh this is an example uh the prototype car is probably an early uh with this uh the big bn logo on the uh on the right hand side as you're looking at it uh an early paint uh, probably as a as delivered type car to the burlington northern of uh, pullman standard um 54 55 foot grain car So then we have a quartet of Acurail cars here, a 1991 car as operations manager Tim would refer to it uh, with a smaller BN logo and the horizontal stripes here. This is a Lincoln grain car that uh, I don't remember where exactly I got the picture for it. I do believe there's a prototype picture of this car patched out to Burlington Northern in this particular number. Uh, Might have been uh, one of the freight car books or I'm not sure. And then a classic BN scheme. This is another Accurail uh, paint job. And then certainly last but not least, the Friends of Burlington Northern car. Um, Friends of Burlington Northern Railroad is a uh, basically the historical society for the Burlington Northern. And they put out or make available to members and other people uh, this uh, decal set. You supply the car, you supply the paint, and the labor to put it on. And it uh, makes a pretty neat car. Um, so I've been... Uh, keeping this on the layout and uh, kind of taking pictures of it as uh, as it goes by and uh, highlighting it where I can to kind of draw attention to the organization. It should be pointed out that Accurail is still making kits. Uh, they're probably one of the last uh, providers or one of the last manufacturers in the country in the industry that's providing uh, basically a shake the box kit. They do make a nice kit uh, or they do make a nice car. Uh, there's some neat things that you can do with these being the uh, the, uh, and I don't have any of these. Well, I do have a separately colored uh, walkway here. Uh, if you want to do something neat to some of these cars, you can uh, alternate colors to represent uh, one of these uh, fiberglass hatches being broken and replaced with a different color. Uh, that's kind of a neat thing to do. And uh, again, you see some uh, uh, modeler applied weathering here, and probably each one of these cars needs a bit more weathering that they have, but um, that's that's what it is. Then we have here another quartet of uh, freight cars. This is a FMC uh, 4750, I believe, from MDC Roundhouse. And what we have here on the left is a couple of uh, examples of the car as it was uh, basically tooled originally. So we have a uh, Burlington Northern car in simplified lettering, greatly simplified. We have then a Fort Worth and Denver car. So if you remember correctly, Fort Worth and Denver is a subsidiary of the... I believe Colorado Southern, which was in turn a subsidiary of the the Q, the CBNQ, Chicago Burlington Quincy. Uh, so this is a car lettered for the Burlington Northern, basically a paper railroad of the Burlington Northern. And then on the right we have a pair of upgraded, modernized freight cars. Here's another Fort, Fort Worth and Denver car as well. Uh, you can see that the end cages are a lot finer on these two cars. Uh, and then the pink car here obviously is a, a farmer's elevator, I believe, Iowa. Um, and the story behind these is kind of fun. Um, the uh, the story goes that an elevator manager's wife was the uh, was the reason for these cars. There's a whole long string of these, many long strings of these being painted pink. Uh, I kind of took off on that story a little bit with the Moorfield Southern. We've got a pair of uh, purple box cars that I uh, amended that story and uh, and changed it for my use to uh, justify those two uh, purple box cars. If you uh, if you're interested in that story, go ahead and take a look at the uh, link in the description. I'll put one down there to that story. Uh, take a look at that after we're done here with these cars. And then, of course, 
Uh, I guess these are modernized within the last 10 or 20 years under, well, probably 10 years or less, under uh, Atherin's ownership of uh, the MDC Roundhouse line of products. And if you ever see a Roundhouse car in the Atherin line, uh, that's where that name comes from, and that's just their their use of that name is their trademark now and basically they're applying that to any product that they're kind of calling an older product or an older prototype uh, that type of thing so in 1968 great northern adopted the big sky blue uh, scheme and uh, they changed to uh, blue and white in that era their locomotives were blue white and I think some sort of a shade of dark gray um, anyway these two cars represent that era uh, we've got an Atherin car here and we've got an Atlas car here and you can see how much finer the uh, the end cage detail is on the Atlas car this is a really nice car I don't remember specifically where I picked this one up but uh, it's a nice addition to the train as is the uh, the the uh, the Atherin car here um, I probably won't notice this unless uh, I pointed it out here. I did paint the bottoms on this one as well. So this is a Great Northern Big Sky Blue that I painted. I'm not sure the paint uh, manufacturer there, but you probably wouldn't have noticed that unless I pointed that out either. And again, this Ath Atherin car is one of the cars with 36-inch wheels and the underset couplers on it. Then finally, a pair of, I guess what you'd call Walther's cars. Uh, this one here is an original a Atherin tooling, but um, Walther's did occasionally get uh, get going on other manufacturers' uh, toolings and do custom paints, uh, special runs. And what they would do is they would borrow the manufacturer's tooling. Uh, Atherin would, would produce a, uh, a run of undecorateds, and then Walther's would have it have them painted and this is part of a I believe a three car set uh, PV grain so uh, there was uh, three different numbers in uh, in the set you'd buy three cars all at once uh, bow tied together from from Walther's and then here's an actual Walther's car I don't remember exactly what the designation on this car is but uh, this represents also a very early Burlington Northern grain car this might have been a uh, uh, great northern car in, pre in a previous life I'm not sure uh, but this comes in uh, came at least to me in kit form anyway, and uh, I put this one together quite some time ago. This is this car has been in my fleet for pro probably 15 years or longer. For the motor power on this train, we've got uh, a pair of Kitbash Kados and a stock Atherin Genesis uh, GP15-1. And then since I've been making such a big deal out of cabooses, way cars, vans, hacks, whatever you want to call them lately, that I thought I'd better cover the caboose that was on this train. Uh, what you're looking at here is an Atlas uh, ready-to-run model from, this is probably 5-10 years ago or so. Um, when I got this particular car, I felt that it ran, rode awful high over the trucks. Uh, so it, they must have modified the tooling here a little bit from the original blue box tooling. Um, I cut down the bolsters a little bit so that the uh, there was less space in between the uh, the wheel and the floor. And I'm not sure what Atherin had going on here, but it looked goofy, to be quite honest with you. So that resulted in a necessary move on the couplers here to put underset couplers on. I'm still running. I think these are the factory wheels on this car. Um, the uh, the car itself has been upgraded. The, the car body has been upgraded to represent a car that's been rebuilt um, to modern standards with the uh, windows plated over. The, so that same deal about FRA glass applied to cabooses as well. So the uh, railroad is obligated to either plate over the windows or provide FRA bulletproof glass. And this represents that situation. Now, why there'd be the windows plated over and still roof walks and and ladders and things like that. I don't know, but uh, it is what it is. This is still a pretty reasonably convincing car. That tangent is a lot better. The uh, well, actually, the the Atlas is, the Atlas car is still a lot better, and the uh, the tangent car is obviously a lot better than that. So, um, this is what I'm running here. I just wanted to make a point of uh, having this particular car on the train. Um, and to kind of give you a little bit of flavor of uh, the modern stuff. And I do have still a couple of uh, plain uh, blue box uh, green cabooses in my, uh, in my collection here, but this is the one I just happened to grab off, off the line this particular time. 
So I'm interested in getting a little feedback. Uh, what are you guys, what are your favorite things to do with these uh, old Atherin Blue Box cars, these MDC Roundhouse cars? They're pretty common out there. A lot of people have a lot, quite a bit of experience with them. And I know I missed a few. There's probably some uh, like Front Rage cars and uh, McKean had uh, some cars. Uh, different brands like that that uh, weren't covered here, but uh, certainly are worthy of note. Um, leave me a comment down below. What are you doing? What do, what do you think of this show? What do you think of my experience here? And uh, what's your grain train look like? Uh, this is the uh, point of the show where we've reached the time to pull the pin. There's nowhere to go, but uh, we're at the top here. There's no re really nowhere to go but down. So that's where we're going to go. And uh, again, leave us a comment. If you like the content here, hit, smash that like button, subscribe for more, and hopefully, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. And to comment about that, uh, the, my first impression on that is, is that um, Boom.